Hey everyone and welcome back to the Weekly Awakening Podcast. It is your host, Colleen Cosmic Colleen. Let me tell you, since Mercury has moved into Pisces, it has been very, very hard for me to focus. Check back on last week's episode where I really dive deep into Mercury and Pisces. And for me, a Mercury-ruled person, and this is for my Geminis and Virgos out there, and Gemini and Virgo Risings, we are going to behave, communicate, and think the way that Mercury moves and what's happening with Mercury and what's transiting Mercury. And right now, Mercury in Pisces is debilitated. Again, we talked about it on last week's episode. And in the sign of Pisces, it's making us very... um, apathetic, hard to focus, just wanting to daydream and do nothing else but work or and work on our creative pleasures or joys, whatever. And I said, it's been hard for me. I've just been like, I want to watch TV. I don't want to study astrology. I don't want to see what's happening this week. I don't want to do this podcast episode. I don't want to cut hair. I just want to watch TV, smoke some weed um, and live in illusions, which is very the sun, Mercury, and Neptune all in Pisces right now. I can just definitely tell you that. But here I am doing this podcast episode, and hopefully it goes well. As my longtime listeners know, when Mercury has some not-so-happy transits, I feel like sometimes my episodes get a little wonky or I'm all over the place. So I'll try to keep it centered and grounded and not all over the place. I just want to remind everyone, thank you again for continuing to support me. The best way to support me and help my show right now is to subscribe, rate, review, send this to a friend, put this out on social media, and thank you for everyone who continues to do that for me every week. I love you guys. Thank you for showing me support. And thank you for just saying, hey, your episode helped me or love the episode. Thank you. That stuff really, um, when I hear just that from one person, one of my listeners, it keeps me going. So thank you, everyone. I just want to tell you something funny that happened today. Little Venus related. You know, Venus is still in malefics and we'll, um, in between the malefics, and we will talk about that on today's episode. But I thought this would be funny to share. Sometimes at the salon, I'll get waxed by Helen, who does, you know, our esthetician, and she's wonderful. But however, her and I are both very busy and our schedules are off. And when you get busy as a hairstylist, oftentimes, like, you don't even want to stay. A, I hate making her stay or come in early or do something. And I don't want to do it either. That's what happens when you get busy. It's one of the blessings. You're kind of like, oh, I just want to get out of here. So sometimes I'll go get it threaded. If I can't get in with her that day at the salon, I'll go get threaded. And I walked into the salon. Um, I'm sorry, the threading salon in the Exton Mall, which is so sad to go to malls nowadays. But I walked in and I said, I want my eyebrows, my lip, and my chin all threaded. And I said, so my whole face, my eyebrows, lip, and chin. And she goes, and she's doing it, and then all of a sudden, she, like, starts... And you know that threading hurts. That really hurts. She just starts threading up along my chin and up around my ear, and I'm like, oh, my God. I said my whole face, and sure enough, I looked on the price board, and there it is. It's the option, the entire face, and I was like, well, shit. I mean, I can't stop her now. She's already halfway through the side of my right cheek, so you might as well keep on going. Hey, it's like those little white hairs I don't even notice. I'm like, am I really that hairy? She did that side, the left side. I was almost in tears. It hurt like my, my cheeks. I was like, oh, my God, I'm getting all of my, you know, my baby hairs off of me. It hurt. However, I got to say, it feels pretty smooth. I never thought about it. And again, I don't notice it because they're light hairs on, you know, my cheeks or these sides or whatever. But my skin feels really smooth. So... I don't know. Maybe it'll be something I do uh, once. But I thought that was kind of funny. That was like a little Venus in between malefics, like especially Saturn and Mars. I like got some pain. I did. It wasn't even really realizing what I was saying or doing. And all of a sudden I got a little cheek pain. So if you get threaded, I love getting threaded. Um, it definitely hurts in general. But just know if you say your whole face, that means your entire face is going to be threaded. <laughs> So let's jump in. The big thing this week is the full moon in Virgo at the end of the week, Thursday going into Friday. And I think it's kind of funny that we have so much. We have this little stellulum over in Pisces, which is the aloof planet, the planet that's often lost in the wonder world, the other world, the underworld, going back and forth throughout life. Opposite Virgo, the planet that wants things to be that wants to make sure things are understood, are um, 
working at its highest self or analytical. You want to understand like, so we're having pretty much a very productive sign up against a very aloof, uh, I don't know where I'm going, kind of mystic, magical sign. When we have the full moon, oftentimes all of our energy, all of our hidden energy is brought to surface and left shining bright so we can see it. That's why oftentimes full moons are associated with, um, you know, lunacy, uh, craziness, wildness, sort of avant-garde. I don't know if that's the right word I just said, but just sort of like wacky energy is because it is sort of shining on the dark. It is showing our shadows. It's showing ourselves. And depending on where the moon is, what's happening in the moon depends on what kind of full moon vibe you will get. This full moon is trine Pluto, so that's a good thing. And it's opposite Virgo. I mean, it's opposite Pisces. So you have two mutable signs. A full moon and a beautiful and a mutable sign will often feel a little bit lighter, a little bit freer, a little bit detached, able to move on, and not so major as a full moon and a more, you know, fixed or cardinal sign. You know, um, a Capricorn sign, a Scorpio sign, that's going to feel a little bit different than this. In one way, when if anything major happens, if any of the uncomfortable full moon stuff happens or is shown to us, we will be much quicker to um, forgiving, understanding, letting go. It might not be so angry. I think this is going to really, this full moon is honestly going to be about us seeing how our play side, right, our dream side, our illusion side, the side that we go to in our mind when we don't want to see what reality is, is going to be pinned up against reality, responsibilities, being accountable, taking action for your life. Those two realms are going to be playing out in your life. If you want to know how that might play out in your life, look to what whole sign house. And remember, I just, I practice, I use whole sign house system. What whole sign house that Pisces and Virgo are in. Now, because I'm a rising Virgo, I'm a rising mutable sign. So this is for all rising mutable signs. That is Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, Gemini. You're going to be feeling this full moon, the heaviest and the hardest. This is happening in our angular houses, the first house, the fourth house, the seventh house, and the tenth house. This is going to be happening in my f- in my first to seventh house. So just to show how this is kind of showing up in me, since I woke up on Friday morning or Monday morning, I have been very like, okay, I'm extremely eating healthy. I've been eating all greens for three days straight after I went and sinned big in um, where'd I go? Atlantic City this past weekend. I sinned big and I said, you know what? I'm ready to get myself together. I am not eating healthy. I'm not doing a lot of healthy things. I'm not meditating. I'm not working out. And I just kind of, as this, we're building up to this transit, I all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, all right, I'm willing to just be accountable and start getting my shit together. And all of a sudden, it's like been very easy for me to eat green, eat healthy, eat all those things, which is how this full moon, I think, is showing up. So I'm going to focus on how else I need to get my my life into order. What vices do I need to let go of or do less of? And how do I need to be more productive inside? So again, with this full moon, we're going to see the productivity, the productivity, um, around our home and our daily environments and are we being productive are we getting our shit in order or are we avoiding it in some way are we avoiding fixing up our house our environment are we avoiding changing are we avoiding getting out of something toxic or unhealthy because our brain likes it our brain's used to it we're scared of change there's all these reasons why we stay stuck there's many different psychological reasons and astrological reasons why we stay stuck. So we are going to be able to see those a little bit more with this full moon. It's going to be re- be revealed to us, our responsibilities versus our actions. And what do we really do and where do we need to be accountable and be responsible? Um, again, I talked about this, the mutable power of letting go. So whatever, um, if any resentments come to surface over this time, if any pain comes to surface, any anger comes to surface, this is going to, be a moon that makes it a little bit easier to let go. 
a little bit easier to say, okay, these feelings are coming to surface. What do I need to do? What kind of action plan do I need to do to remove these feelings? I no longer want these feelings inside of me. I let them go. I forgive that person, place, or thing. Now, how do I actually remove them? We're going to see a lot of that. Um, We're going to be a little bit more introverted, a little bit creating our energy inwards. We're going to be, this might not be the full moon where you feel like going out and putting yourself out there. This might be the full moon where you stay inside and you draw and you create um, you get romantic with a loved one. We'll be a little more introverted and in, in with ourselves. Um, again, this full moon is really coming to me a lot about being sick of our own bullshit. We have to. We are humans in having a spiritual experience where we're constantly growing and evolving our soul. And part of that, no matter how good you think you are or how good you think you are getting, is living in your own shit. We can't, for some reason, we can't exist without one or the other, good and bad. Some are worse, some are less, some are better, this, you know, vice versa. But I think there's going to be almost an aha moment. Like I kind of had this weekend after my eating not very healthy and and drinking a lot of sugar and things like that is I sort of had this like, all right, I'm over my bullshit. It is time for me to get healthy. I can't, I got to quit playing. All right, Colleen, you got to quit playing and getting healthy. It might be like that with with romantic loves. Let's say you're always chasing someone, you're chasing the wrong type of person and it just keeps going, going, going in circles, you might be like, you know what, I'm so sick of my own bullshit. Let me just stop picking these people I'm picking. Or, you know what, let me stop fighting with people. Why am I fighting all the time? Or why am I always not putting myself out there? Why am I always letting people walk all over me? Whatever it is, you're going to be sick of your own bullshit, and you're going to see it, and you're going to think about how you want to let that go. How you want to focus. And, And taking action. I think every month, and I know sometimes I'm guilty of this, I easily am am focusing on what's happening and saying, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do to let go, or this is what's happening. This is going to be my affirmation. This is what I'm going to focus on. Yet I don't always take the action that I need to. I don't actually look and say, okay, it's not just about saying you're going to let this go. What is the action? So something that you've been saying you're going to let go of or move on from or change, you might all of a sudden be thinking, or realizing what that action plan is or what that action plan needs to be. So the action plan of letting go of your own bullshit is going to be revealed with this Virgo full moon. Now you got to actually do, you got to trust what's being revealed to you, gain the awareness, figure out what you need to do to make the changes and shifts to let go of that toxic bullshit to make more room for new toxic bullshit. (laughs) So, again, this won't be as crazy of a full moon as others. We've had some intense full moons in 2022 already. This one would not be one of them. Um, Mutable signs, again, this is going to be felt a little bit more for you, a little more intense. But with the mutable full moons, it's a little bit more relaxed, easy to let go of, and not so serious. If something serious happens, usually the repercussions or whatever, whatever ends up happening doesn't end up being permanent i guess you could say that makes sense um okay something else i wanted to talk about i'm like wait a second where are the rest of my notes oh so back on the venus show we bought on this venus horse and i said that we're almost out of the venus clear we're almost out of the venus we've had a lot of things being shown to us in our relationships friendships romantic partners children it's been a journey since the beginning of november and then we thought we were out of the tunnel. However, Venus is now moving moving ahead. And in the process of Venus moving ahead and moving direct from the retrograde, it is now in between Pluto and Saturn. It moves out on the other side of Saturn at the end of March and then heads into Pisces, where it's very happy. So at the very beginning of Ari- at the very beginning of April, we are going to have like a very rejoiced Venus. We are finally going to see the light at the end of the tunnel after a very long almost six months of Venus being held back in Saturn's signs, with Saturn there and Pluto there. So again, right now, the energy with that might still seem a little bit shaky, unsure, depressed, joyless, that mixtured with Mercury and Pisces, Um, a little bit wonky, not wanting to take action, kind of tired over it, feeling lethargic and feeling like, when is there ever going to be an answer? 
When is there ever going to be a shift? When are things going to get better? In regards to your love, friendship, um, you know, some Libra, I know a few Libras, Libra Risings who have been going through a lot with their body over um, the past four months with Venus retrograde, relationships, aesthetics, all of that stuff with Venus retrograde will finally, you know, it's still unsure. It's in that unsure area in between both malefics. However, the light is at the end of the tunnel. Eventually, we will get a breath of Venus fresh air at the beginning of April. So right now, our kids might, they're feeling better, but they might still be a little bit antsy, a little bit um, talking back, separating. I shared that on an episode a couple weeks ago about with Venus and Pluto and Mars, the conjunction, especially Venus and Mars, there was a lot of kids separating and separating from themselves, their pair, I mean, separating from their parents, uh, being very like, no, this is not what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is not it. And I love talking to my clients about it because usually they give me reassurance. And I was talking to a client this past weekend and she said, she's not necessarily a big like astrology person, but um, that those are the best types, right? Because I usually throw them for a loop. And I explained to her about this and she said, that's really weird. I chalked it up to my daughter being 12, but she really has like declared her independence about not wanting to play certain sports anymore that we thought she loved. And these parents really want her to play these sports. They're like, you have to play this. And she's, and don't you love it? Kind of, you know, both parents had played this sport and were very successful at it. And their daughter was leading up to her 12, had been also following her footsteps. And her daughter was like, yeah, I'm not doing it. I, I don't care if you want me to do it. I'm done doing it anymore. And she kind of, she didn't take it personal, but a little personal because this is kind of her dream as well. And she's like, that's interesting because she's really like telling us, like separating from us. Like, I know this is what you want me to do, but I want you to do that. So there's still that little bit of independence from the, um, oh, I know it's been rough. It's been really rough for me and my kids. Every day gets harder. I love it. I love it every day. I love my children so much. I love seeing them grow and shift and become. However, it is very stressful and tiring. I thought it was tiring when six and under. That's just physically tiring and they needing and them con and controlling them. Now it's like every day sort of helping them understand their emotions, making sure that they are somewhat productive members of society. I'm constantly yelling at my kids. They're like, why are you so bossy? I'm like, so you become successful and happy in life one day. I have to be that way. So, you know, you don't make all the bad decisions I made. It's definitely hard. It is really, really hard. It's amazing and rewarding. So for the, some of the parents out there that are listening, it's really fucking hard. Every day is a struggle in one way or another with kids, you know, but we love, that's why we love them so much. Then, and then we restart, you know, we restart. And if you don't have kids, just remember that, that they're a pain in the ass forever. <laughs> they're an amazing pain in the ass, the most amazing pain in the ass, but they really are. And I love you guys and um, love my children so much. They do bring me a lot of joy, that I can tell you. So this week, it's a pretty low-key week astrology-wise. Like I had said, we have the full moon, but it's going to be a little bit of a, of a low-key full moon. We still have Venus in between the malefics. And there's not too much stuff happening. Next week, we'll come back on and we will talk about um, some of the bigger transits at the end of the month. Mercury moves in a conjunction with Jupiter, and then it moves into a conjunction with Neptune. Both are going to bring two different flavors, gonna, but are going to be pretty positive. So... Other than Venus, we're headed towards a pretty smooth, um, you know, rest of March into April. I'm really excited for April. We have eclipse seating started. I'm excited for Venus moving to Pisces. I think that we're going to have a relatively easy and smooth uh, April compared to January, February. A little bit harder then. I hope everyone has a great week, has a great day. And uses this to bring some awareness. I did an episode last week that I'm uh, hopefully getting out after this episode at the end of this week. I think it's perfect for the full moon in Virgo. Um, I had Dr. Varun Gandhi out in L.A. on my show yesterday. And we really just talked about health. And it's funny. I knew he was coming on the show. And I knew he had all these topics that he talks about and what I kind of wanted to talk about. However, I quite kind of forgot about the health part a little bit. Like the the eating and drinking health part and I was like remember I told you at the beginning of this episode I was kind of like okay I'm done eating bad I'm gonna eat good everything and I was like oh shit I have this episode this recording today so there is there any coincidence that I'm doing this recording 
for the full moon about things, you know, healthier lifestyle while I'm trying to create a healthy lifestyle this week. And he just reminded me of so many good things. The intentions we set before we drink water, eat food, how healthy it is. We talked about conscious eating. We talked about our programming, changing our thoughts, our minds, so much. He really pumped me up with just wanting to be a better, healthier lifestyle. And for those of you who put content, put work, this can this can kind of relate to to anything. Like I said, I've it's been very hard for me to focus. When Mercury is in places where I can't focus, I really don't know what to do. It's not easy for me to create content. It's not easy for me to focus. I'm all over the place. I kind of feel lazy, aloof, tired. I look at that as a energy recharge. Instead of saying, oh, my God, I'm going to fail at this or this isn't going to be successful or this or no one's doing this, I say, you know what, Colleen, this is actually an energy recharge. Your mind, body, and soul are telling you to slow down, go inward, and and create yourself work something on your soul and you will create new content so instead of getting bummed out again and if you feel that way if you're kind of feeling like oh i don't know which way to go what content i should make what do i want to do where do i want to go make peace with yourself it's it's not this is a time for you to go inward and sit with yourself and be with your mind body and soul not project your mind body and soul so allow yourself This space that the universe gave to you that said, hey, instead of working on creating, work on innovating. I don't know if that's right. I tried to think of a better word, not innovating. I I really wanted something clever there. Damn it, Mercury and Pisces. I really wanted something clever in there. Work on being inward and work on what it's like to just sit with yourself. Work on what it's like to get pure creative energy from being out in the ocean, being out in the forest, going for a walk, painting, something that harnesses your creativity, do that. Every time that you feel like, oh, I don't know what I need to post on social media, don't freaking worry about it. Do something that's not on social media. Every time you feel that way, say, you know what? I'm just going to paint right now. I'm going to draw. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go to a nudist exhibit. I don't know what it is. Something out there. I'm going to do some shrooms. Something to connect your soul, and you'll find that creative energy there. Again, I hope everyone has a fabulous week. Thank you for loving me, supporting me. Remember, on all my social media, Cosmic Colleen, 1C, uh, across the board. On Twitter, there's an underscore, though. Thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous week. I love you so much. Make sure you check out my newest episode after this with Dr. Varun Gandhi to get some health tips. Love you all, and have a great week. 